Have you ever wondered, is teaching yourself the cello possible? Is it possible to learn without a private teacher those one-on-one -on -one lessons that are so powerful? Why do we go astray and get so frustrated with teaching ourselves? Well, there is bad news and good news, of course, as well as some best practices to keep in mind, and I have a few surprises about self-learning you won't hear anywhere else. There are key aspects of one-on-one -on -one lessons with an expert teacher that you can take away for your own and keep in the back of your mind while teaching yourself. And that's what I'm going to share with you now. Teaching yourself is difficult, but that is why I'm here. Hi, I'm Clay from the Cello.online, and first let me say I don't want to sugarcoat anything. It is a monumental task to teach yourself. But again, that is why I'm here on YouTube, to help make that task easier. So first the bad news, or the rest of the bad news. Let's get it out of the way so we can be done with it and move on. Is having a live, in-person teacher better? Of course it is. It always has been, long before technology existed, and it will be long after technology has greatly improved. And it does need to greatly improve. But there is good news. So here are some best practices for learning on your own. Number one, checklist and goal setting. You have to ask yourself on a regular basis, am I actually doing the thing, whatever the thing is, whatever it is that I am trying to achieve or whatever the piece is, am I doing what is being said? You have to be consistent with this. Whatever is being said in the video you are following, it is up to you to go behind yourself with a magnifying glass, so to speak, and decide if you have, in fact, achieved the goals. Now, you may not even be aware if you are falling victim to this next part because we aren't even aware of it in the moment. That is, that often, especially if we are just starting out, students haven't actually achieved the goal, or they think they have and they are far from it, which brings me to one of the surprises I have for you you won't hear anywhere else. Now, third-party, outside, unbiased observation of the student from the teacher is very important. That part is obvious. But it isn't just the third-party, outside observation that is responsible for student success, and this is really important to understand about human psychology. Everyone thinks that the sole and only power of lessons comes from going to an expert and getting that expert knowledge and outside observer information. The expert knowledge is, however, only one half of the benefit. The other portion, and I really do mean half the benefit of one-on-one -on -one lessons, the aspect that is rarely spoken about is the fact that in a one-on-one -on -one lesson, you are the only person in the room. You know that what is being said is being said to you and to no one else. It's being said to you and you only because you're the only student in the room and it's being said live in the moment. This is very powerful and it's very important that you appreciate this power of the one-on-one -on -one lesson even if you aren't taking them. Why? When you watch a video, you have the option of saying to yourself, well, this video was made for lots of people. You get to treat it like grocery shopping. Take what you like, put back what you don't like. Unfortunately, that's not how learning works. If you were at a private lesson, you wouldn't be grocery shopping. You wouldn't have the option of putting anything back. Thus, when you watch a video, you have to be humble and you have to try everything out. Even the stuff you are 100% sure of. You have to say to yourself, this person is talking to me and I need to try it. Then the next step is to try and get some outside observer perspective. And this brings us to the second very important thing you must do. Record yourself and listen back. There are actually two ways to achieve outside perspective by yourself. One is very advanced, and that is mental practice, which I have a video about. If you are just starting out, though, this is not a good option, but once you have some playing experience, it becomes a great option if used correctly. The easy way to get some honest perspective on your playing, the one that everyone can use right now, is to video record yourself and watch it back and listen. So many of us have phones right in our pockets. You're watching this video right now on some device and it probably makes a recording of some kind. Phones are best, but you work with what you have. There is just no excuse for not recording yourself in this day and age. You have to take the time to do it, especially if you don't have a private teacher. You have to record yourself, listen back, and make adjustments. Even if you aren't doing heavy-duty analysis of your playing and then making specific adjustments, just the listening back alone has great benefits because it makes you more aware of your sound. This is the thing that holds students back that don't have a teacher. They aren't aware of what they are doing wrong. There is a gap in awareness of the sound that is coming out of your cello while you are playing. Just like the first time you heard your own voice on a recording, it was most likely shocking, and the same for the cello. 
hopefully. What you hear live in the moment is not the same as what you hear on the recording. There is a gap there. The ability to record yourself and listen back changes that. It closes that gap by making you more acutely aware of what the sound actually is, live and in the moment. It isn't a magic wand, but over time, the more you record yourself and listen back, the more you become aware of the sound you are making, and the faster your progress will be. I have two more for you, so hang in here with me because these are two pieces of advice that are so important and I don't think you're going to hear them anywhere else, especially the last one, number four. This next one may sound scary and will probably be controversial to some, but that is find somewhere to play. Find someone, another musician to play with. Maybe there is someone close by that is like you, learning. Or maybe there is a community group like a church band or a community orchestra or some other group. Put yourself out there. Maybe you don't get in. Maybe you need some more time, or maybe you find someone to play with, and this is going to be huge. From the moment I started playing musical instruments, I had somewhere to play. It wasn't even a choice, it just happened, and it's a big part of my progress, because for the first three years I played cello, I never had lessons, but I played at church, and youth orchestra, you get the point. Find somewhere, someone, even if it's just one other person to play with. Now, number four is a Clay McKinney Cello Online original for sure, and that is that you have to go and watch lots of different videos. Lots of different cellists. Yes, I want you to like my videos and watch them and hit the like button and all that stuff is great for the channel and I am so appreciative that you guys are here and watching and I want you to keep coming back for more. The only thing I want more than all those things is for you to learn to play the cello. And that's what I care most about. And one of the best things you can do for that is to have lots of voices in the room. Lots of perspectives. Lots of different ways of explaining it. You have to go and experience many cellists. Not just one or two, or even three, but many. As many as you can. This is just how our brains work. The more different ways you hear something, the more likely it is to stick and stick down deep where it counts. Wherever you are on the self-learning journey, there are lots of videos on the channel here to help you. This one right here is new, so maybe this one might help you. And this one right here is the one YouTube thinks will help you the most. Click and see how well they did and make sure to leave a comment and tell me how well they anticipated your needs. I would love to know.